All right, let's get started with our next chapter today, which is solving systems by substitution. So to start, if you guys can go ahead and solve this system by graphing. So if we can go ahead and hit pause in the video and you guys take some time to try this on your own. Okay, let's see how you did. So if we were to take a look at this first equation, it's not in slope intercept form. So let's go ahead and do that. So you'd have to subtract 2x on both sides first. And then divide everything by 2. And 3 over 2, which is also you could say 1.5. So if I were to graph this, I would start at my y-intercept, which is one and a half. And I have to go down one, staying in between over one. Okay. Now let's see how this one went. Let's go ahead and put this one into slope-intercept form. Oh, oops. And then divide everything by negative 4. So y equals 1 fourth x plus 1 over 4. Okay, so now I have to go ahead and plot this 1 fourth like there. And then we go up 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4. And then down. Okay, so... My point here, the reason why I wanted you guys to do this, is I wanted you to see that maybe there are going to be systems out there that graphing is probably not going to be the best method of solving. So I want to introduce to you guys the next method, which is solving by substitution. So can this work? Yeah, but I probably would have to change my graph to maybe go by, instead of ones, going by like one-fourth, so I can see the exact spot. Now, it looks like they could cross at a decimal or like an in-between fraction number. So graphing is not the best for when that happens. So let's move on and see another method. Okay, so we are going to do an example together. And I'm going to kind of fill out these steps as we do it on the right-hand side. So here's our example. So if we were to solve this system now by substitution, the first step that we need to do is to solve an equation for one variable. Or, we know this as isolating, trying to get a variable by itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I have any equations that have a variable isolated. Meaning, I'm looking for anything that has like x equals or y equals. Do you see any? I actually see one that's already solved for. This one right here. So when you're looking for a variable isolated, they don't both have to be isolated, just one. So this first equation is already done for us, so we don't have to do step one. Okay, step two, we have to substitute one equation into the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to bring down this system I'm going to use some different colors here to help you out. So this, if one step one is done, step two is the tricky part. Once we can do the substitution correctly, the math from there you guys can handle. So I'm going to use this pen, this other color pen, to help you see this. So y equals x plus one, right? So I need to substitute this into my other equation where y is equal. So I'm going to go ahead and go like this and put my arrow. So my job right now is I'm going to isolate and sub in what this says, x plus 1, into the other spot. So I'm going to rewrite this so this makes a little bit more sense. So I'm going to rewrite 2x plus, don't put y. You know what y is. y is x plus 1. And then just write the rest of the equation. So take a second and really look at that because that's the hardest part, you guys. Again, here's my system. This equation, solve for. 
right? I know what y is. What's y? x plus 1. Your job, sub that into the other equation, replacing that. So now, if you look at this new equation, do you guys see how you only have one variable? Now you can solve. So your job is to sub in one equation into the other, so then you can solve it. Because right now, you can't solve either of these because you have two variables. So step three, solve this equation. Now, you always want to use parentheses because there are going to be occasions where there could be a number here and you have to distribute. But in this case, I don't have to. So I'm just going to rewrite this and drop the parentheses. And then you can go ahead and combine like terms. Okay, let's move this over. And then divide and we get x equals 2. Okay, so now we're halfway there. Think about this. This says x equals 2. Our final answer is going to be exactly what it was when we were solving by graphing, a point. So if I know x, all I have to do is plug this back in to find my y. So that is step 4. So you are going to plug back in to find the other variable. Now you have a few options. You can substitute this back into whichever equation you want. Um, I usually try and find the easiest one. So I'm going to use this y equals x plus 1. And I'm going to replace what I just found. So we just found x. It's 2. And then go ahead and solve y equals 2 plus 1, which is 3. All right, so to finish this, your final answer, your solution, you have to write as an ordered pair. So my final answer is 2 comma 3. Let's try it. So I'm going to help you guys get started, and then I want you to go ahead and hit pause and try it on your own. So the first step, like I said, is kind of the hardest part. Your job is to look and see if you have any equation, either. It doesn't have to be both, just one that has a variable isolated, meaning all by itself. So if I look here, I have the x and y on the same side. So that equation will not work. But do you see how I have a variable all on its own? So what I like to do, I underline what y is equal to, and then I actually draw an arrow, and that's where I'm going to substitute. So your job is to then rewrite this equation, plugging that in. So I'm going to write x plus, in parentheses, I'm not going to put y, I'm going to put 3 plus x equals 21. Cool. Um, go ahead and hit pause and you guys please finish and see what you get as your final answer. Okay, let's see how we did. Combine your like terms. Start running out of space. 2x equals 18. Divide by 2. You should get x equals 9. But again, you're not done yet. You have to make sure you plug that in and sub it into either equation to see what the other variable is. So like, I know that this is x, right? But I have to also find y. So you can, again, plug it into either one. Looks like the top might be a little bit easier for me. So I'm going to go ahead and sub in to that equation. So I know what x is x I just figured out was 9, so 3 plus 9 would give me 12. So my final answer I have to write as a point would be 9 comma 12. So we talked about this the other day with how would you check your final answer. I'm hoping you guys remember that when we checked it with graphing, it's actually going to be the exact same thing with substitution. You would plug that point 
back into both equations. Has to work in both. So why don't you go ahead and practice checking this one? Go ahead, hit pause, and practice checking. Okay, let's see how we did. So let's check in this first one. All right, so this is my x and this is my y. So I'm going to sub in 12 here and 9 here. 12 equals 3 plus 9 is 12. Awesome. It works in the first. Okay, let's write the next equation. Okay, let's write and sub them in. What we got for our final answer. Whoops, sorry guys, I put the wrong number in. So we got x is 9 and y is 12. And if we add 9 and 12 together, we get 20. Hmm. Cool. That's how you check. Same thing we did with graphing. All right. Let's go ahead and turn it over. So what happens if you don't have an equation with a variable isolated, right? We just saw two examples where we had an equation that said either x equals or it could say y equals. It doesn't always have to be y. But sometimes that may not happen. So this is where you guys have to do the work and change one of those equations. For example, let's take a look at this one. So I'm looking for if an equation has x equals. So if I look at here, I don't have that. Okay, then I'm also looking, okay, well if I don't have x equals, what about y equals? Same, I don't have that. So this is the tricky part. You have to pick one of the equations. You don't have to change both. I usually only change one. So how do you know which one to change? Um, you guys can pick, but my suggestion, pick the one that's the easiest. How do we know which one's easy? Your job, you guys, is to look for variables that have a coefficient of one, ideally, or if you're super desperate, negative one. And if you don't have either of those, then it's a, kind of a tricky problem. But usually you guys should see in a system that you have a coefficient of either one or negative one, and then that's the one you pick to isolate. So, for example, let's go over here and take a look. So, for this first example, my coefficient of this right here, and just to go over, coefficient is the number in front of the variable, in case you forgot. Okay, so what's the number right here in front of y? We know that as 1. Okay, what is the coefficient right here in front of this x? Negative 1. What about this one? 1. And then in front of this one is 1. So you actually have options for this one. Um, you can pick any of them to isolate. It's totally up to you guys. So you pick whichever one, and then you have to change and either subtract a term over, add a term over, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to pick this bottom one, um, and I'm going to change it so it says x equals, just to mix it up, because I think we keep always doing the y equals. So I'm going to write this equation down, x plus y equals 12. And my job is to get x alone. So I need to move this term over by subtracting it on both sides. So please go ahead and do that with me. So now I'm left with x equals 12 minus y. Okay, so now I know what x is. So then I need to sub it back into the other equation. Be careful that you don't sub it into itself. Okay, you always want to make sure you plug it into the other equation. So let's do this. So I'm going to rewrite this one as y minus, in parentheses, 12 minus y. So this right here, this negative, that's why these parentheses are important, um, you are going to actually have to go ahead and distribute. So this is y minus 12 plus y equals negative 2. And then we go ahead and we solve it. y and y would give me 2y. Let's go ahead and add that 12 over. 
and divide by 2, and we should get y equals 5. Okay, we're super close. We have half of the answer. Now we need to go ahead and plug this in. Now you have options, you guys. You can plug this back into the original problem, or you can do the one that's isolated. Um, I'm probably just going to do this one that's isolated because it's already set up and it's super easy for me. So I'm going to sub in what we got for y. So 12 minus 5 is 7. So my final answer is that 0 0.7 comma 5. Just so you guys know, to connect all the dots here, I could graph both of these lines on a coordinate plane, right? The same exact thing that we did um, last week. So I could graph these lines, and they would cross at 7, 5. So we are still doing the same thing. We're finding a point of intersection, but we're using a different method by solving by substitution. All right. Let's go ahead and end. Here is your last problem. Watch your negatives. Um, if you guys can go ahead and why don't you talk with your neighbor and figure out which equation are you going to isolate because I think that's the hardest step. So why don't you hit pause, you guys talk with your neighbor and figure out which equation are you going to isolate. Okay, I'm hoping you had a chance to talk with your neighbor before you started solving. If you notice here, let's just go through and see what our coefficients are. So what's the coefficient of this term? 2. This one is 1, 6, negative 5. So your job right now, my suggestion, um, if you want to go ahead and you want to isolate, pick the coefficient of 1. If you guys choose to pick anything else, you might get fractions. This will save you from fractions. Cool. So go ahead, change that to then say y equals, and then finish the problem. So please hit pause and you guys go ahead on your own and finish that up. Okay, um, let's see how we did. So let me rewrite this. Got some room here. We have to isolate by getting y by itself. So I'm going to move this 2x over. All right, and this is what I'm going to sub in. So I just fig figured out what y is. So in my other equation right here, is where I'm going to substitute that in. So rewrite the entire equation, and then in parentheses, negative 2x minus 9 equals. All right, we have to distribute. Again, please watch your negatives. Combine your like terms together. Move this guy over so we can get x alone here. That gives us negative 64. Divide by 16, and you should get x equals negative 4. Let's finish. Sub that back into either the original problems, or you can do it back into the one that's isolated. I'm going to choose to put it right here and plug in what we got for x, which was negative 4. Okay, let's do this. Negative 2 and negative 4 is 8 minus 9. Y equals negative 1. Okay, so our final, final answer we have to write as a point x comma y. All right, you guys, you just learned your second method on solving systems by substitution.